Hello Oscars, my name is Tony. Every week I scour the indie game website itch.io and pick 5 games to play. This week I decided to go after shoot 'em up games. After playing through them, I'll tell you which games you'll enjoy and which you should avoid. This is Games Jam. Zeus Stole My Wife is a shoot 'em up game with a high focus on comedy. It's honestly really good at making me specifically laugh. It has a style of dry comedy focused around automated voices, which is something that I grew up with as a kid and absolutely love and, and makes me laugh consistently. The gameplay is still fun, though I wish there was more variety in, e in the fights as each boss fight is just the same but like slightly faster. So I feel like the game doesn't have a lot to do. The general concept is still there, and the gameplay is pretty polished and, and fun, but the lack of variety and lack of maneuverability of the vehicle especially makes the game boring real fast. Without the comedy aspect of the game, I feel like I wouldn't recommend it. Um, if this game gets another release or an addition onto it, I'd like to see a more diverse boss cast as well as maybe levels actually leading up to the bosses and maybe add some kind of slow motion feature to make dodging bullets easier. Anyway, if you want to quick shoot em up and laugh, pick this one up. But if I don't do it, they will pour water over me. Neon Blight is a great game that has a lot of unfortunate problems which makes this I can't really recommend it in good heart. The game takes Enter the Gungeon and combines it with a shop simulator like Moonlighter in a cyberpunk setting with interesting dialogue and characters. The gameplay feels super fluid and the gunplay feels really good. Dodging, slashing, and shooting is a classic combination and this game does it a lot of justice. Unfortunately, there's a lot of bugs and issues in the game that make it impossible to recommend. For one, there's no music in the game, which is tough for shoot 'em ups because they are almost rhythm games and music helps me personally get focused, so not having that musical aspect help kind of detract from the experience for me. That alone wouldn't be reason enough, but a lot of the stuff in the game is unfinished and unexplained. The shop menu is unreadable for me, due to being in the bottom right and clearly uncentered. Managing your shop is confusing and I don't know how to enter any of the prices for the weapons. Now that might be obvious, but the game never really states it, so I don't know. Overall, if this game comes out with a patched, full edition, I would say pick it up. Otherwise, it's too buggy and too unfinished for me to recommend. Last Rush has a sense of arcade fun that I think really brings me back to being a child going to the arcade with my dad and having him show me the Galaga machine. The game is simple, you're constantly shooting bullets, you can shoot infinite bombs, and quickly changing direction releases a gust of air that can kill enemies. Enemies are constantly coming in waves and the game is pretty scary, letting you restart at the last wave you died at. Enemies come in rapidly and it's a great time trying to find a position you need to be in to not die immediately. I remember beating the 40th wave of the game and having a physical, like, yes I did it reaction. Overall, play this game. It, it, it's really fun, it's really simple, and it does what it's trying to do very well. Project 
Patrick Schmoop is the most classic shoot em up here, and it's not the best, in my opinion. Maybe I just suck at this game, but I feel like death was plentiful and unavoidable at times. Like, it's hard to tell what patterns the enemies are going to be shooting, and where they're going to be, or where they're going to land. Uh, besides the difficulty though, the game is pretty fun, very classic formula, and speed changing to lead to instant maneuvers to dodge bullets. Overall, if you don't like a, a frustrating time with the game, then don't give this one a play because it can be pretty frustrating with how much death is constantly happening. I had to put it on the easiest difficulty to get to see as much content as possible so that I could get this video out. But if you if you've got a good foundation in these kind of games and you really know what you're doing, then give this one a play. You're probably gonna be a lot better than I am. Outpost Horizon Station is a game focused around gravity. Another simple concept that works really well, this game is really focused around move and shoot. One hit kills you and the enemies, so it's all about getting the first hit in before they get to you. The catch is, is that you're in a broken horizon station where you're in a gravity field of some sort, so you're constantly surrounding the center point and moving around that center point so the movement is all circular and it's really interesting if you ask me it creates a lot of, of interesting maneuvers that you can do to dodge enemies because of how the gravity moves you and uh, makes you change direction in the space the art for this rotation is very impressive as it's all pixel art done by hand but the constant shifting of pixels can be a bit disorienting, and it hurts my head a little bit. Besides that, the game is very fast-paced, and it's a very death and restart kind of game that I really like, that kind of formula really appeals to me. Um, it has a kind of style that makes me want to keep playing and keep beating my high score, especially because the game has these um, rewards that you get by completing goals that they give you that are basically a high score and it's very very good at drawing people in especially people like me overall give this one a play but be careful because you might get addicted it's that good Hey, thanks for watching Ospreys. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on the Instagram at UNFSpinnakerTV. Remember to stay safe and wear your mask.